Today we're making ridiculous apricot vodka, which means we're gonna start with vodka and put a bunch of apricot flavor into it to make apricot vodka. I'm calling it ridiculous because I'm gonna use a bunch of different techniques to get the flavor from here to here, an attempt to kind of uh, figure out what the best plan of attack is for you guys doing it at home. Or you can just make the ridiculous stuff too. <laughs> How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and we're making apricot vodka. Why am I gonna go to the effort uh, of using a bunch of different techniques? Well, the idea is to, to kind of show them off a little bit, show the different ways that you can cram fruit flavor into a spirit so you can decide which ones you wanna use when. And the excuse today is apricots. And I've got a bunch of apricots at the moment and I kind of like the idea of an apricot vodka. <laughs> Uh, there is one technique that I am not going to use today. I'm going to get that out of the way right up front. Uh, that is, I am not going to uh, mash and ferment the apricots to make a, a fruit brandy, an apricot brandy. Why not? It's two reasons for that. The first is, uh, if you're aiming for an apricotty vodka, it seems like a little bit of a waste to go through all that expense and effort and then strip as much flavor out of it as we kind of can to end up with a vodka seems a little bit silly to me. Uh, and the second reason is that often when you mash something and ferment it and then distill it, it ends up not tasting like the fresh version of that thing. Does that make sense? Often the flavors change, they morph, it makes something delicious and unique, don't get me wrong, but often it won't taste like actual fresh fruit. You can use any vodka you like. So if you wanna just buy some off the shelf, awesome. Uh, if you're making turbo packs with the still spirits gears and then charcoal filtering it, awesome. Uh, but I'm gonna be using the kale wash vodka that I made a little while ago because I still have it uh, and I'm gonna use it up. Let's start the maceration with one liter of 50% ABV kale wash vodka. Like I said before, use whatever vodka you want and if it is at a lower ABV, that's fine. And to that, we're going to add eight apricots. I'm gonna uh, break them in half, slice them up into smaller pieces and remove the stones. We're gonna dump them all into the liquid, into the alcohol, close the lid up and let it sit. I'm gonna let mine sit for five days and just uh, monitor it and see what happens. I ended up letting this sit for, it's been five days now and the color of the apricots is starting to, like they're starting to turn white. I think I could probably let this go a little bit longer, but I'm gonna pull it now. When the color of the fruit starts to really disappear out of the fruit itself, that's usually a pretty good indication that a lot of the flavor's gone. Um, I'm gonna pull this now though. I don't think it's got a lot left to give. Anyway, let's have a little taste. Whoa, big apricotty nose, wow. Holy crap. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, tastes apricotty. That's not the surprise. The surprise is how freaking sweet and syrupy that is. You could not call that a vodka at all. There's like, it's not a vodka, it's a liqueur. Wow. Um, okay, so you could stop at this point. If, if, if this tastes delicious to you, awesome. Um, that is great. I mean, that's what we're here to do, right? Is to, to make something that tastes good to you. But what I would like is all of the flavor with very, very little of the mouthfeel. I wanna make something lighter, brighter, so on and so forth. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is redistill this. Uh, and to do that, I am going to filter the apricots out. My filter's over there, hold on. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this is gonna go so badly. I don't know, maybe not. I'm gonna put this through the air still, and to be honest, the air still would handle this just fine. Uh, in my experience, it would not scorch this at all. But we will take it out uh, because at this point it doesn't have a lot left to give. Just give it a little squeeze, see if we can get any more liquid out of there. Wah! It's all going downhill real quick. <laughs> I mean, obviously you can be as thrifty as you want at this stage in terms of you know how much time do you spend straining it versus how much alcohol are you happy to leave behind. Uh, I will be honest with you, I'm just giving this a gentle press. I'm more worried about time right now than I am, you know, getting a few more, uh, a few more glasses worth of alcohol out of this at the end. So I'm just gonna give it a quick push 
uh, and attempt to be in bed at a reasonable time tonight. It's already uh, 10.30 and I've got to distill this. So let's keep moving, Jesse. <laughs> this can go on in here. Uh, and some of you, oh my word, I just spilt some, that was silly. Some of you are probably asking a couple of questions here. First, uh, do you need to proof this down to get below 40% ABV? And the short answer is, I don't know. <laughs> I went into the maceration at 50% ABV and it would have taken some moisture out of the apricots, um, but eh. So I'm just gonna be a little bit cautious and throw a little bit of water in here in a second. I'm disorganized and I don't have it with me. I'll go grab it. Uh, and the other question is, uh, why didn't we just leave the fruit in here if it's not gonna scorch? Because I'm going to put more in. <laughs> I've cut up another four apricots and I'm gonna put the flesh of said apricots. It's a bit morbid, isn't it? <laughs> the flesh of the apricots uh, in here into the pot. Plug it in and we'll get that warming up because we're gonna macerate this really quickly uh, at temperature like I would, um, the, like I've been doing recently with gins and stuff like that. So let's get this warming up. Uh, I'm gonna get it up to 50 degrees Celsius and I'm gonna let it sit for one hour. Also a good idea to put this thing on um, and plug it in because, hey, look at that. <laughs> There's no way to really tell if this is actually turned on unless you can hear the fan running. Uh, so I know it's on, I know it's warming up. I'm gonna go grab my thermometer. Man, I am so unorganized for today. I'll be back, hold on. <laughs> I'm back with my handy dandy thermometer. Let's double check and see where we're at because we're probably getting close actually. 52 degrees Celsius, there we go, that's, uh, that's perfect. Let's knock that off. Put the lid back on and we're gonna let that sit for one hour. But uh, do you know who's not disorganized? Wifey. Erin, <laughs> my wife, is, uh, is really onto it in terms of organization and she is going to be looking after a bunch of things that I have done horribly over the last few years, like actually sending out emails to let you guys know what's going on when events are coming up, uh, if I'm going to be in your part of the world and I'm traveling, uh, new products coming out on the store, sales, all of that stuff. Uh, so if you're interested in hearing from Erin, and getting the lowdown on everything that's happening in Chase the Craft, uh, go to the website, chasethecraft.com, and about halfway down the, the front page, there's a, a newsletter thing. You can sign up there. I'll go find something else to do for an hour in the shed while, uh, while this macerates. <laughs> it's actually the next morning uh, because I ran out of camera battery. <laughs> Muppet. So this is macerated for a little bit longer, uh, but that's fine. I got to mess around and do some uh, testing on some stuff. Crap. Where was I? I guess I could blur it out. So I'm gonna blur that thing that was here out uh, because I'm not allowed to actually show you that yet. <laughs> uh, let me get this other apricot cut up and put into the, how much can I fit in here? Yeah, I probably don't want to do it too much more than that. We're going to put some uh, apricot in the vapor path as well. Um, so the thing that was over here that was blurred out, uh, there's a new product, a new distilling product coming uh, by Still Spirits. It's not available yet, but I will be able to show up pretty soon. Um, what can I say without... It's interesting. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say for now, so I don't get myself in trouble. All right, is that... Yep, we're locked in. Okay, so we've got uh, an additional apricot's worth of apricot up here in the vapor path as well. We can get that locked in and actually, finally, ready for distillation. <laughs> so we have first drips uh, and remember team that because we put vodka in here that already had really solid cuts made on it in the past, I'm mostly cutting for apricot flavor now, which means that we get to keep a whole lot of that really uh, volatile apricot flavor up near the heads. Hmm, weird, it's almost like, um, almost like orange peel, which I was not expecting. Uh, so I'm gonna let just a few more drips come out. There we go, it's fading already. Fading, fading, fading. 
And one more test. Yep, gone. That is so weird. Distillation still amazes me. <laughs> it still does things that I don't expect. Uh, so there we go. Uh, I'm gonna ditch this. You can call it four shots, you can call it heads, you can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm getting rid of it because it doesn't taste like what I would expect apricot to taste like. So let me get that out of the way. So now we can get just into collecting the bulk of the run. Uh, and what you just saw here, the fact that we don't need to take heads and lose fruit flavor into the heads uh, is another part of the reason why fermenting fruit and then distilling it can be tricky. With whiskey, you tend to be fighting the borderline between grain flavor and tails, in my experience. Uh, and with fruit, you tend to be fighting the borderline between the fruit flavor you're trying to capture, especially that bright, um, like fresh fruit flavor and heads. So by doing it this way, we've kind of just erased that problem for ourselves. Anyway, let me uh, let this run out for a little bit and I'll come back to you when, I don't know when, when something interesting happens that I can tell you about. <laughs> So we're a solid way into the run now, uh, and I'm surprised that actually the apricot flavor, if anything, has intensified on its way down. Uh, and I saw a little while ago, maybe a, about a week ago, uh, reports on Reddit, on the Firewater subreddit, uh, that one of the users was making apricot brandy and finding really intense apricot flavor all the way through the run, even when you're fermenting apricot. Uh, and that kind of makes sense doing this little experiment. If the apricot flavor lives further down in the run, uh, it's much more likely, in my opinion, to really show up as fresh apricot flavor in a brandy. So just to distinguish, up much closer to the heads, like way back down here somewhere, um, was the kind of the smell of apricot. Like when you rip an apricot open and smell it, that smell was way back down here. Uh, but now we're getting more of the, it, it, it's heading towards dried apricot, but not quite. And it has that, I don't know what to call it. I've always just called it the furry flavor. <laughs> Horrible connotations there. But that kind of flavor that um, the not shiny skinned, like anything from an apricot through to a like a, a peach, that flavor that they have, especially near the skin, um, is coming through a lot now as well. Currently down at about 55% ABV, and interestingly, we're heading more and more and more towards just straight up dried apricot, which is crazy. Um, that almost, like, I wouldn't call it bitter, it's kind of like leathery, almost bitter flavor that you get with um, dried apricots. That's coming through now. And I like the idea of having a little bit of that in there. I'm just gonna monitor it pretty closely though and see if it turns to any weirdness real quickly. Let's, uh, oh no, my alchemeter is broken. Let's see if I can force that back together. Yeah, that's what you get for buying the cheapest stuff. 51% ABV and I'm thinking I'm gonna switch here, but I'm intrigued to see what comes after this. So I probably won't keep anything, but I'm intrigued to see what comes next. So uh, I'm just gonna let this run for another 10 minutes or so and see what happens. <laughs> uh, I've gone all the way down to 30% uh, and we have definitely made it past that weird, like slightly tannicky, bittery, I don't know, weird flavor. <laughs> We've made it past that uh, and now it's just kind of meh. There's nothing really interesting going on. Um, so I'm gonna call it. We're not gonna keep any of this. I am, however, gonna keep all of this. Now, uh, what could you do at this point? Well. There's a few different options. Uh, number one, you can just proof it down to 40% ABV and drink it like it is. Uh, and let me have a taste of this. I think that would be quite pleasant, actually, especially if you start with like a nice mellow vodka to begin with. So the, the vodka's not, you know, the heat of the spirit isn't fighting with the, the fruit. Number two, you can do exactly the same thing and sweeten it just slightly. Well, I mean, sweeten it as much as you want. But often, a little bit of sugar, it, it, it's like seasoning for fruit flavors. When you have flavors that your head stores as 
These are sweet flavors. When you add a little bit of sweetness to it, it kind of pumps the flavor up. It, it brings a flavor out. But I think I'm gonna go for a third option, which is to do yet another macer macer blah, 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 maceration, maceration <laughs> with apricot, just a wee bit for a couple of different reasons. One, I really like that, that thickness that I had earlier on in the maceration. It was way too much then, but a little bit of it now will be great. Two, we'll get a little bit of sugar from the fruit and that'll help season it. Um, number three is often I find um, fruit flavors benefit from having a slight, almost imperceptible tartness. It's the same kind of, I think it's the same brain connection as the sugar thing. It, you, you, your body's used to real apricot is not just sweet. It has, a, it has like a, a tartness to it, right? So if we get a little bit of that in there, that's gonna help us think fresh apricot as well. And third, um, just a tiny, a weeny bit of color. So when you're looking at it through the bottle, you're sort of thinking, is that colored? I think it's slightly orange. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty cool as well. 400 mils. Huh. That's saying 60% ABV. And I don't believe that. So I'm thinking when I dropped it before and broke this, Maybe I knocked it out of calibration or whatever. Let's, um, let's use this as well. Yeah, this is saying 72%. So I don't believe you, little refractometer. Um, all right, that can go in there. So I'm gonna proof this to 45% now with the assumption that uh, throwing some fruit in here is gonna drop the proof down even more. Um, and as you can see, I've only ended up with about 600 mils out of a litre. Um, you always lose some when you redistill like this, you know, if you're making gin or, you know, redistilling anything, even from vodka. Um, that is quite dramatic though. Uh, and it looks, no, I think that'll clear up. Just bubbles. Um, so I think maybe I should have squeezed that fruit a little bit harder. Anyway, uh, let me cut up a couple of apricots. We'll get them in here. We'll let it macerate. Um, and we can test it. But it would be smart to save a small amount of this to compare uh, against the macerated version later on. Yeah, let's not be quite so stingy with that, Jesse. And the apricot can go in. It has been two and a half hours and I am going to call that quit. So I had a little taste just now and it's tasting pretty much how I was hoping it would. Um, the body is good, there's a little bit of color. Uh, so it's time to pull it before it gets a little too extreme. Soup spoon, that um, you saw nothing. <laughs> Don't tell the wife. I don't wanna smush this too much and like literally pulverize the apricot and get floaties in there. So we'll call that uh, and I guess, Heck, what was in this bottle? Vodka was in this bottle, so that is perfect. Do I do it without a funnel? I guess I do. The magical thumb pour, look at that. I would say I haven't spilt a drop, but then that would jinx it, wouldn't it? <laughs> there is some tiny little particulate in there. I have yet to decide if I care or not yet. <laughs> if I decide that I care and that I decide that that's kind of gross, um, I'll put it through a coffee filter and that should sort it out in no time, like a, a paper coffee filter. But uh, for now, let's taste uh, the distilled version next to the uh, double or the re-macerated or the, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> the, the final product. This is the one that was distilled only, not remacerated. So I guess this is like the apricot flavored vodka. Uh, and this one is the one that was remacerated. That is not a vodka, not really a liqueur. I don't know what to call it. Uh, before I taste them though, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much team uh, for being the people that support me day in, day out. I thoroughly freaking appreciate it. Uh, and just to let you know, um, my wife's gonna come on board to help make the Patreon experience a little bit more special for you guys as well. So hopefully you'll start noticing some changes starting to come in over the next 
probably six weeks. <laughs> cool. All right, let's taste. Way more apricot on this. I like that. Apricotty. Pretty smooth. Think it will smooth out even a little bit more as it sits. Mmm. That wins. That wins hands down. It's more smooth, it's more velvety, voluptuous, easy going on the palate. It has more mouth feel. It, you, you can totally tell that it's not just vodka, you know. So this one uh, is kind of like, it smells like apricot booze. It hits your tongue, feels like vodka, you swallow, and then you kind of get this big rush of apricot afterwards. And it leans more towards the, like towards dried apricot. Not quite there, but that way. This one smells like fresh apricot. It hits your tongue very velvety, but then you get this kind of like effervescent, the, the, the pH, I guess, like this slight tartness. And then as that melts away, you get the sweetness and all the rest of the apricot sort of like washing over your tongue from fresh all the way through to that um, like that fluffy kind of peachy flavor I was trying to describe earlier and then through to the dried apricot. They're both delicious. If you had to call one of them a flavored vodka, this. Honestly, you can't go wrong with either. Try both and uh, pick your preference. Now, will this process work with any fruit? Uh, it'll work. Some fruits will do better than others. Uh, some fruits will you know, lend themselves more towards being mashed, fermented, and distilled, which we haven't done today. Some will lend more towards just maceration. Some will lend more towards maceration and distillation. Some will perform better with, you know, distilled and vapor path. And if you're really into a specific fruit, or you grow, you know, if you have a pear tree in the backyard, and every year you're going to end up with 40 kilos of pears, uh, I would suggest doing each of those techniques by itself and seeing what the outcome is, and then you can decide which of them to actually utilize going forward. Does that make sense? That's how I'd do it if I really cared about one specific product. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I'm very interested to hear from you guys what techniques you use for what fruits. Get amongst it down there, and I'll catch you next time. Keep on chasing the craft, guys. See ya.